in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you are not at liberty to invent the pathway that makes for your relationship with God. It is only when it has to do with your dominion upon and around the cosmos, then you will draw from the wealth of creativity. When it has to do with God, there is always a pattern. Please understand. The first mistake that I think many people make is they attempt, as if it's possible, it says, stand ye in the ways and see, and then ask for the old part, wherein is a good way. That means not every way is a good way. It says, when you find it, walk therein, and that if you walk in this path, the proof is that you will enter a Sabbath. There is a rest. When you learn to walk in his ways. Hallelujah. It was prophet Micah that began to speak about the end time church. And he said that it will come to pass in the last days. Micah was teaching us that the mountain of the Lord's house. Are we together now? Shall be exalted above other mountains and other hills. And men will flow through it. They will flow to it and this will be their conviction they will say to one another come let us go to the house of the lord are we together now to the mountain of the god of jacob and he will teach us his ways this is why we seek his audience to know to come into a comprehension of the ways of god are we still together so it is important for us to understand that there is a pattern in the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Bible records that God continued to come to supervise what they were doing. Remember, they were building a tabernacle in the similitude of that which was in heaven. And the goal was to be able to host his presence. Are we together now? And the spirit of God had to come upon a man called Bezalel. It was not just a, he was not a businessman. It was God's insistence to see that his patterns be kept. And so he had to be empowered by the Spirit of God. And God supervised the dimensions of the building. Everything had to be done according to pattern. His presence never came until the last peg was hit. And then the Bible says, then his Shekinah. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this room. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills my life. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence fills this place. His glory, the glory of God always comes to prove that his patterns have been kept. Everywhere you see the manifestation of the glory of God is an attestation that his patterns have been kept. If the patterns of God are not kept, the glory, the Shekinah of God, there are three dimensions of the presence of God. The first dimension of his presence is called his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. It was the psalmist that said, where can I hide from your presence? If I go to Hades, the place of the dead, you are there. So there is the omnipresence of God. 
The second dimension of his presence is what I will call his Emmanuel dimension. God with us. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. The third dimension of his presence is what we call his Shekinah. His presence. He does not just come. He comes and ensures that the people are aware he is there. Are we together now? That one, you don't just get it by default. It is a reward for insisting that his patterns be kept. So I can know to what degree you are in keeping with his patterns by seeing the dimension and the effulgence of glory that is upon your ministry, upon your life. This has nothing to do with sentiments and it has nothing to do with fivefold ministry. It has everything to do with the insistence. The glory of God has a size that will not change. Until your alignment creates that shape, the glory cannot rest on you. Your assignment is through the sacrifice of death and alignment that you assume a mold and a posture that will make God feel at home whether he's in you or on his throne. There is no difference. It says, now arise, O God, and come, not to the temple, to your resting place. It's a place intended for you to remain. We together so we have different opinions about different dimensions of the kingdom that we seek I want to see the power and the glory of God come and rest upon my life what is the formula some say pray others say fast others say have vigils others say go for an impartation others say take communion others say Get a bottle of oil and all of these fabrications that come. And, and sometimes, you see, let me tell you, it is dangerous to have failure for a long time. Because it will lead you to create a theology around your limitation. And you will mentor others from the standpoint of your frustration. To mean that just because my Christian experience could not capture this dimension, it is impossible for God to flow on that wise. It is why conferences like this are so designed to expand our spiritual horizon. To bring us to a point where we access possibilities that are beyond our current experiences. And we must be humble. That's why the Bible says we receive with meekness. We receive with meekness, not with intelligence, with meekness. The fortitude to understand that there is more. There is more. There is more. More than my experience. There is more. John was already in heaven and yet he was told to come up hither. In heaven, come up hither and I will show you. You have seen the things that be but you have not seen the things that will happen. From that pedestal you cannot see it. So come up hither. Are we together? There is a pattern that is responsible for the effulgence of the power of God upon a man. There is a pattern that is responsible for church growth. There is a pattern that is responsible for wealth and prosperity. There is a pattern that is responsible for becoming the face of God to a generation. There is a pattern. And we must become like spiritual archaeologists with our hearts open to seek and search for the patterns. Jeremiah told us that these patterns are there. Some of them are dusty. They have been ignored by the pride of our civilization. Some of them have been ignored by the, the puffing up of the vain knowledge that comes with our dispensation. But let God be true. And every man and every age be a liar. The patterns of God are unbending. They will never change. Are we blessed? It was the psalmist that said, oh God, you are my God. He says, early will I seek you. That means in the dealings of God with men, timing is important. All times do not produce the same result. No, sir. The boy Samuel began to seek God early. By the time he would become an adult, none of his word would fall to the ground. It matters the timing of your spiritual pursuit because it takes time to know God. The jealousy of God does not allow him to be revealed carelessly. He will vet your hunger 
and until it supersedes everything within time, he will not come. Away with that mentality that we have. Just because God loves us does not mean his presence is cheap. Anything of, valuable carry, of value carries a price. Are we still together? Yes, Jesus. There are patterns. The restoration to the patterns of God will be the secret to the power and the grace of the church. Otherwise, we will continue to write books. We will propose dimensions that we know are possible in God as revealed from Bible history, but our experiences will fail to capture them. And a time will come when a generation will be tired of our stories. These things I write unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, not teach alone. We must document persuasions that are provable. God can do this. Yes, we know. God can lift. Yes, we know. We turn them into songs. We turn them into poems. We turn them into sermons. And they are coming from well-meaning hearts. But we must come into a point of accuracy, quintessence, and understanding. The patterns of God are a proof of his justice. It brings predictability to our work. Are we blessed? Luke chapter 1, please. You won't believe I've not even started teaching. But Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I don't know how we got there, but wherever we can stop. Luke chapter 1. We'll start from verse 1. Please look at this. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were what eyewitnesses and ministers of the word verse 3 it seemed good to me also dr luke now is writing to theophilus part of his mentorship platform he's 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 telling us the object the goal the motivation behind his writing the synoptic the book of luke he said, it seemed good to me also, having had what? Perfect understanding of all things. A man can come to that realm. Perfect understanding of all things. From the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Please keep that scripture. Keep it verse 4. That you may know the certainty. So that you will come to a point of comprehension that you have not been taught and are not been taught cunningly devised fables. As spiritual and as high as these truths are, there are realities in the spirit that can find expressions in this earth realm. And so Luke is writing to Theophilus that as complicated as these things sound, do not think they are just fables. These things are true. And I'm being meticulous in my description to the end that you may know the certainty of those things. So that when we say God lives, you don't doubt. When we say God can anoint, you don't doubt. When we say God can pick a man from a dunk hill, you don't just think you are echoing a prophet's writing that these things are certain. The apostle says it this way, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. It's not only that I have believed, I have been persuaded. It's an indoctrination. It has become part of my conviction. It will not change. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So I'd like us to look very briefly and then we'll pray. The patterns of God that have been allocated by grace and by the spirit that can allow a man and allow men to do business with God within the context of a civilization. Please listen to me. Let me tell you this sincerely. It takes more than being available to be used by God. You come as you are, but you are never used as you are. Are we together now? Yes. And so, aside from the election of grace, 
There is an election that comes as proof of the depth of your alignment. There were people who were called prophetically, but there were others who insisted. They were so aligned, God could not resist them. An example of such was Elisha. There was no prophecy that Elisha was meant to be a prophet. Elisha was a farmer, but Elisha refused. Are we together? Insisted until he became a prophet. So there is the calling according to God's predetermined counsel, but there is the calling that, that makes as a result of your refusal that Lord, if you are passing this way, I will align so much you cannot ignore me. And God says, look, I must create space for you in my program because it is not normal for men to be this yielded. And since you have gone this far to bend over backwards, I must find a space for you. He says, let his bishopric, let another take. There are vacant spaces in the dealings of God. There are people who have been mandated to carry certain certain mantles and certain graces but because one of the things that God gave men fundamentally not Christians men is the power to choose I can reject the call of God it says as many as received him anything received can be rejected are we are we still together so in the economy of God the relay as as designed for a generation you pass this button here. You have a worshiper here. You have an apostle here, a pastor, an evangelist. It's a formation. But an individual can refuse and say, as an act of my will, I choose to sabotage your program. And his mercy will continue. And while the mercy of God continues to last, his eyes will keep searching for vessels who were not in that program, but have refused and said, God, you cannot ignore me. You can't ignore my morning sacrifices. You cannot ignore my worship. You cannot ignore my tears. You cannot, I know that I come from a family that should not be part of your program, but let my alignment be an altar that calls you to be part of your program. You can call the attention of God through sacrifice. Not just a seed, you. Are we together? What does it take to be used by God? Does it take your worship? Does it take your preaching? Does it take your education? What does it take to really be used by God? Does it take just saying, Lord, I surrender? What, what, what is the key? Please pay attention to what I teach you. Because for many, these, this conference will become a defining moment to your spiritual work. Truly, it will. Number one. I have searched. And let me say this. And I submit to you while I say this, I do not mean in any way to communicate anything that shows pride. And if at any point you perceive anything called pride, I'm, I'm sorry in advance. But I'm just, I'm just saying it. Sometimes it's difficult to articulate spiritual things without being misunderstood. You know, sometimes um, it's, it's difficult because people think that um, it's pride. Paul said it in Ephesians chapter 3. Before he began his exegesis, he said, look, 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 I need to put some things clear. When we start from verse 3, Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 3, I think I should borrow the words of the apostle. It says, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Everybody say the mystery. It's an exact mystery. A mystery is a body of knowledge allocated for the victory of the saints. An exact body of knowledge. Not any body of knowledge. Are we together now? Yes, please keep the scripture there. But it was Apostle Peter that began to teach us that we are a chosen generation. Don't just keep this scripture. I'm just digressing for a reason. He called us a royal priesthood. Is that true? He says we are a holy nation, a peculiar people. And he tells us why all these things are possible. He says we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Everybody say marvelous light. 
it is the presence of the marvelous light that becomes our advantage in the kingdom. Marvelous light. An exact body of spiritual truth that brings forth superior victory in the kingdom. There were many lights, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1. It says, but God made two great lights. So the lights are not the same. Even among the stars, the Bible says, one differed from another in glory. So the dimension of glory that is released in and through your life is not just dependent on the love of God, but the depth and the quality of spiritual illumination that you sustain. Are we together? Yes. So Paul is speaking here that by revelation it was known to him. There are things that cannot be studied. There are things that cannot be researched. You are initiated into that body of knowledge. It's like occult. I'm sorry to use that word, but it is true. There are certain dimensions of spiritual understanding that you will never find, no matter how zealous you are. It's a gift given to your passion. Your assignment is to be passionate enough to attract the dimension of the spirit of revelation and you are introduced into that body of knowledge. Verse 4. Still Ephesians 3. Whereby when ye read, and in this case when ye listen, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's touch one scripture and then verse 9 of it. I love this because part of the revelation given to men Part of the mystery and the graces that people sustain when they have encounters with this revelation is certain graces that speak in the earth realm. One of it is the grace that can make men see. There is a grace that makes men see. Not just hear, see. A grace that works upon your fortitude of perception. Regardless your educational background, regardless your level of exposure, that when a man is ministering under that kind of grace, you are brought into a point where you must understand what is being communicated. This is not oratory. That's what the Bible calls portraits. It's not the fluency of speech. It's a spiritual quality that coordinates spiritual understanding in a way and manner that it must be understood regardless of your lapse in understanding. You are under the influence of a grace that insists that you must understand. Hallelujah. I've shared about my encounters with Jesus. I've shared about my encounters with several generals and carriers of the fire of revival. Some of them you've read about them. Many of them have long gone to be with the Lord. And I do not claim to know all things. That will be pride and that will be a lie. But there is one thing I can tell you. I understand the protocol of the secret place. It's an office. And I want to share with you a few things that I believe will be able to help believers to find God and prove to a generation you found him. Are we together? So while you're seated, can you hold hands with someone and just begin to pray in the spirit just in a few minutes? Is someone praying? All the overflows, make sure you are praying. Open my eyes, oh God. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what you will say unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Number one, the first key that qualifies a man to be mightily used by God to become a conduit of his possibilities within the context of a generation. The first key is not prayer. The first key is not fasting. The first key is not giving. The first key is death. The price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is not all of your seed. It's not all of your certificate. It's not all of your singing. Death. It was Jesus that was speaking and said, the hour has come that the Son may be glorified. And then he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except, this is the condition, a corn of wheat falls to the ground. If it falls to the ground and remains there, it's still not dead. Just because you are touching the ground does not mean you have died. And dies. It says it abides alone. Death. Death. Complete surrender that leads to death. Complete surrender. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's a mystery. I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I am sponsored by another agency. Please look at me. This is a very powerful revelation. Being used by God is more than just being, is more than surrender. Surrender is important, but it does not stop at surrender. You must die. It's a condition that not even Jesus escaped. The price for life is death. The price for the throne is the cross. It's non-negotiable. There are no sentiments attached to it. Now, this is the kind of that sometimes our generation does not like to listen. And sometimes it, it is because, you know, in an attempt to bring balance to our theological understanding and our exegesis of scripture. Sometimes we move in the flesh and we begin to just push everything left, right and center. Listen, when people talk, look at their results first. It is important for you to know this. The price, the first key is death. When Solomon was about to dedicate the temple, Listen, the Bible says that there was a sacrifice already upon the altar. Are we together? And then Solomon began to make a covenant. And he said, oh God, arise, come to your resting place. That if anyone turned to the temple in need for help, let the covenant speak. And then the Bible says, the fire came, the Shekinah of God came upon that temple. Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech thee brethren, this is Paul mentoring the church in Rome, part of his apostolic ministry. I beseech thee brethren, he says, by the mercies of God that ye offer not your spirit, not your mind, your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. Not just your act of worship. That means your act of worship that can touch God. Your body. There are certain things about death that we must understand. Number one, a dead man does not respond. A dead man has no ego to protect. For as long as you are alive in yourself, something about your flesh will interrupt the program of God. It has nothing to do with being good or being bad. It has everything to do with being human. That the reality of our humanity has a way of interrupting God's program. No man can endure pain indefinitely. No man can endure embarrassment indefinitely. No man can endure discomfort indefinitely. So the moment you are alive, one day you will react. And you may react just when the program of God 
is about entering a new season. So God will not take chances. You will die as the journey starts. The grave is a mysterious place. We fear it. But there is a dimension of the grave that we need. Because it is where death ends and where resurrection starts. They all happen in the grave. There are many times that God allows. Let me tell you one of God's technology for bringing death to you. He will allow what you fear to come upon you. Now I know you don't like what I'm saying. It does not destroy you. Isaiah 43 from verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. And then verse 2 says, When thou passest through waters, I will be with you. Not I will take you out of it. I will be with you. There are times that he takes you out of it, but there are times that he walks with you. Both of them are called deliverance. You need to learn. <laughs> Please keep that scripture. 43 and verse 2. It says, when you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through fire. It's amazing that when it has to do with fire, you don't run. You walk slowly. Because there is something the fire needs to do in your life. When you walk through fire, you don't run through it. You walk through fire. And as it burns your ego... As, as the prophecies of your enemies seem to come to pass and it's as if God is not watching God I thought you would come through for me to shame them and God says there is a bigger agenda than proving a point stay on course we are talking about something generational not some mundane family crisis we are talking about carrying mantles not for a church not for a city for a generation is running away from Saul because Saul is looking for him not knowing that this young boy this runaway boy would later not only become the king of Israel but answer the name that will birth the Christ but he's in a cave called Adullam what is a king doing in a cave let me tell you this hear me just help those under the anointing listen to me I wish I can tell you everything will happen overnight. Not everything in this kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. If everything is a gift, what is the reward for obedience? Not everything is a gift. No, there are rewards in this kingdom. It is why all men are not the same. Please hear me. I don't know how to make you believe this. We are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. But by reason of God's predeterminate counsel, alongside our various depths of sacrifices, we have been separated into spiritual cadres. Not all things are possible for everybody. There are people whose life has become an altar and a covenant. The, the covenant has implications. Elijah loves heaven. There are 7,000 other prophets. Don't you think they were praying, God, don't mind that prophet, open the heavens. And God says, I'm doing business with this man at another level. Your sacrifice can make God brand his dealings with you. Give it a name. Many people walked with God in the Bible, but not all were called the God of this. There were people who walked with God. He named himself after his experience with them. Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouths of lions. Death. Death to your ego. That you get to a point where you say, Lord, right now, I'm not living for myself again. Anybody can think what he thinks about me. It is no longer about the preaching. Listen, the secret to be in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on his presence. When you die enough to love him, love him more than ego, love him more than money, this adventure of using God to be successful, this adventure of using God to get anointing, just because you think it's anointing, God is not that foolish. Until all of you desires all of him, you will not find him. Let me show you the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. 
please do not forget this for as long as you live. I call it the law of encounter. And ye shall seek me and only find me when ye search for me with all your heart. Everybody say all your heart. That means if you seek God and you don't find him, the diagnosis is that something about you has been lying to you. It's not all of you that is looking for him. And you don't have to be bad for this to happen. Remember, we're not talking about good and bad. We're talking about the humanity of men. I know you came from a background where no one succeeded. And so the pressure is on you to make it. I know you are human. But unfortunately, God does not work that way. A woman wants a child to prove to her stepwife, Penina, that she's not barren. And God says, if that is why you want a child, you will not hear from me. In spite of Hannah's mocking, I mean Penina's mocking Hannah, you, you thought God would say, okay, let, let's prove a point. There are times that the agenda is bigger than proving a point. And if the goal, the object of receiving spiritual thing is so they will know, God says, that's too small. You must give me a reason that is generational. Is God blessing us this afternoon? Death. The heart of man, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 and 10. God himself, vetting the heart of man, told us something that we must never forget. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. Do you know how many deceitful things we have in this life? And yet the Bible says the heart is more deceitful than death. That means even the owner of the heart can be deceived by the heart he's carrying. The heart is so deceitful it can deceive you, the owner of the heart. It says who can know it? This is the reason why we need to die. This is how God operates. Verse 10. I the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. That means while I kneel down and say, Oh God, visit me, increase my church. And while I'm rolling on the ground, he's not just seeing my rolling, he goes to my. Remember, his word is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. He's seeing that in spite of my rolling on the ground, the truth is that I, I saw a ministerial colleague that we started ministry with and I saw the expansion in his church and sincerely, in the name of honesty, my humanity just came up and said, ah, Mr. Man, you've been in this city for many years. What are you doing? And that was the premise of my 40 days fast. And from day one, the fast, it will not be useless, but it will not be used for what you think it will be used for. It will rather be used to align your spirit to see what is wrong, not to give you membership. I hope you still love me. Death. It's amazing how believers are distracted because of little things. It's proof that we are alive in ourselves. He didn't call me apostle. He didn't invite me here. I have noticed this person looks down on me. All these things are proof that you are alive. I'm not saying to dishonor people. No, not at all. But there is a way you can so die that you lose. You are, your, your eyes have been set like a flint. There are some things that do not have power within your environment again. God can give you a billion naira now and say give it. And you are not banging and casting and say, Lord, if you are the one, let the wind blow to the left. All those things are proof of unbelief. It's, it's proof that you are alive in yourself. You see, Ba, this money we are looking for that distracts us. Did you know the last treasure that Jesus had failed him? He's still searching for a replacement till today. So the, the dimension of wealth that people talk about that makes them, the people have not even seen the wealth that is coming to the church. And I mean it truly speaking. But the person who will be God's treasurer in this generation must be the person who, whether God keeps his blessings in the storehouse or in your life, it must be the same for him. The reason why you love, listen, please help those under the anointing. The reason why, look at me, the reason why you trust your bank is ease of withdrawal. 
I hope you know. The reason why you trust your bank is because you can slot an ATM anytime. When you become that ATM to God, you will never be empty. I just failed to say that. Death. 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 Only dead vessels carry God. The size of God is too heavy for you to carry while you are alive. It will kill you. Only dead men can carry God. You want to carry the grace and the anointing that brings a generation under the submission of Christ. Please hear me. It is going to take more than posters and billboards. It is going to take more than intelligent speaking. It's going to take more than theological exegesis and your ability to communicate well. There is a track record in the spirit. There is a signature that is only signed with blood. A proof of death. It is at that point you will file your name in the realm of the spirit. Jesus I know. Paul I know. You write your name. Paul said let no man trouble me. I didn't jump classes in the spirit. Here is my scar. I went through it. I went through it. Demons will not just listen to you just because you saw it in the Bible that they shall come. You try it. The sons of Sceva tried it, did they? We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Jesus whom Paul preaches, the real Jesus. And yet the spirit did not shout and say, ah, Jesus. Even Jesus was talking to Satan. Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, 40 days fasting. He's talking with Satan and Satan is not shaking. Satan is saying, let me hold you and take you to a mountain. So what is Satan really afraid of? Jesus, the word, the logos of God, filled with the spirit of God without measure, with fasting on top, is talking with Satan. The word is now spoken and yet Satan is not running. Find out what he really is afraid of so that we don't make a fool of ourselves. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh. I told God anything I cannot give you in this life may it never come and I'm saying it as I'm standing here if the Lord asked me to stop ministry now I stand by the God of heaven I'm speaking I know that they are recording this I will never carry a mic again till Jesus comes I love him more than ministry I love him more than titles don't allow men clap you out of the will of God you must sustain the grace and the hunger please hear me I'm, I'm, I'm talking, this is not preaching, you know. This is not, I'm, I'm speaking from the, you know, sometimes when we see people who God has dropped his hand upon them, sometimes we need to be open like this to say this thing so you will get it. Don't let fame, fame can be deceptive. People can clap their hands, you know. When I was coming in, thank God for your wonderful protocol people. I saw everybody running around and some of you were holding cameras. I said, ah. Oh God, that great man is still your boy. Still your boy. Still your boy. He's somebody's father, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's mentor, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's role model, but he's still your boy. He's somebody's hero, but he's still your boy. The day you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit, and pride gives you an award for completion, that day you begin to die immediately no matter who you are. The day your knees becomes too far from the ground, that is the day your crown will fall from your head. I tell you this. This is the mystery behind the destruction of the great. This is why people start well and don't finish well. 
It's not sin that destroys people. It's not just fornication that destroys people. It's not just all these demonic things. No, the mercy of God is still there. It's the rebellion of rejecting the secret place. That's where people die. That's where people stay and are destroyed. They clap you out of his presence and you cannot die. Please listen to what I'm telling you. Because there are people, this is why you came here today. Leave, forget man of God, woman of God. Thank God for that. But it's time, somewhere in this service, we are going to cry before God. And say, Lord, this is no longer apostle. This is your boy. Are we together? This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed so we must pray the prayer of the psalmist he says search my heart lord search me i'm not ashamed of what you will find if you find lost there i'm not ashamed i will say i'm a big man if you find lost kill it before a generation kills me for it if you find pride i'm not ashamed when i stand before you I know I'm a great musician. I know I'm a great man. But I come to you. May your all seen eye set my heart, set my motive. Live ministry, live preaching, live singing. Focus on me. Listen. You can be fasting as a man of God. That fasting is, complete, is almost wasted. You can go to God as a colleague, trying to get one or two things. The anointing for the season with your hand in your pocket. Let me tell you the truth. You need to understand that although we are one with Christ, our dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. And there are times you need to join the 20 and 4 elders. Take away your golden crown and join them to lie down and cry, Kadosh, holy, holy. You want to carry the grace for a generation? It is more than just fasting. It is more than just praying. It is death. Where you are not ashamed of whatever God finds, people can be clapping for you and God says no. In the last two weeks, pride is growing in you. Lust is growing in you. In the last two weeks, bitterness, you, you are, uh, no, 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 walk on it and you get down on your knees quickly and say, Lord, I'm not ashamed. What is there to be ashamed of? I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he offer your bodies a living sacrifice. It was Apostle John who was teaching us in 1 John chapter 2. He started from verse 15 and he said, Love not the world. Look up please. Neither the things that are in the world. Love not the world. He's teaching us friendship with God. And he says, love not the world. He says, neither the things that are in the world. He says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That word is the word eros. It's an affinity that can distract your passion. The jealousy of God necessitates that he becomes the object of your passion. Alone and at all times. Love not the world. The cosmos has a seduction to it. Money has a seduction to it. Fame has a seduction to it. Are we together? Every good thing has a seductive component to it. And it is only death that can immune you, especially in the generation that we live. Please hear what, don't pretend you are not hearing me. Oh, this is the voice of God. 
If you want to last, if you want to stand strong, you must forget about some of this paraphernalia of ministry and be true with God and be true to God and say, help me. Don't let, forget the ignorant, the people will talk about you and say things, don't mind them, leave them, do your business with God. Because when you are tried like that refiner's fire, then you will come out with a dimension of grace and glory that people will look and say, from whence come this? And God will say, this is what I can make out of men who die. See, let me tell you this. Please look up. There are three levels of anointings. And I, I think I should just digress a bit to share this. We'll find somewhere to pray. Number one, there is the anointing that comes upon you as a believer. The Bible lets us know that there is an anointing that indwells a believer on account of his being grafted into Christ. Are we together now? Yes. Number two, there is the anointing that comes upon you on account of the office that you occupy, which represents the ministerial allocation given to you as far as God's program is concerned. He will empower you. But number three, there is the anointing that comes to you as a reward for understanding what God is doing in every season. That is the anointing that can come upon a man by reason of what you represent as far as the now speakings of God is concerned. I can be anointed as far as the office I occupy is concerned. And yes, not carry the anointing for the season. This is why you find certain people in very relevant and then certain seasons just fade them out. It's not necessarily backsliding. It's that the anointing for what God is doing now. Now. What he is, not what he did, but what he is doing now. Was not there. Death. 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 Show me a man that has mastered the art of being open to God. No matter what you say about that man, you are wasting your time. A broken and a contrite heart oh God thou so when it comes and finds strength in yourself it will go back there is nothing for it to do in your life hear me let me speak to someone the strength of God does not look for strength the strength of God looks for weakness so the quicker you acknowledge your weakness the more you invite his strength Lord I don't know what my tendencies are outside of your grace and your help and so I cry that your strength will come and people see you rise and stand with an agency that is not human. Are we together? Yes. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. More than fasting. More than praying. Thank God for all of those other things. But they are completely vain if you don't die. No impartation will cover for death. No amount of seed will cover for death. No amount of kingdom service will cover for death. You don't die as husband and wife. No, when it has to do with the secret place, it is he, not them. It's a personal affair. You can encourage one another until you get there. And it's the deal. Hallelujah. Only dead men can carry God. The Spirit of God continues to echo the burden of the Spirit. It is not as if certain graces cannot be made affordable and available in the body. But let me tell you this. The price that it takes to receive that, not many people are willing to stay. There is a rush for manifestation. There is a rush to be known. There is a rush to be recognized. And these things is, is something that is intrinsic in us. But God must find people who say, Lord, if it means me standing back and nobody will see me for you to be glorified, I am satisfied. And mean it genuinely. Not coming to tell lies on stage. Genuinely and truthfully. You know, let me tell you, truth has a presence. When you are a lover and a carrier of truth, when you speak, that spirit of truth backs what you are saying. I 
love him with all my heart. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. It's not a song. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. It was Pastor Elijah that taught the body of Christ. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. That's the language of dead men. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Lay your hands on me, dear Lord. Breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your again not as a special number as you are saying take your place you know when the ark was going to be restored back David danced danced some of you need to say look this relationship give way God needs that space now to find his place this obsession for ministry obsession for expansion as important as it is can be a loss he said see then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that God easily beset us and he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking forward and looking at Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him the Bible says he despised the shame God is looking for space in your life. He is not one of the many things. For Don't say God is in my heart. He's in your heart as number what? He can be in your heart as number 35. He's not satisfied. That I'm in your house does not mean I'm in your bedroom. I can be in your house and I'm at the lounge somewhere. I'm in your house but I'm not satisfied. Let me tell you this. The jealousy of God fights anything that takes his place. Even if he's the one that gave you. He will fight it until he sits on his throne. Are we together? It is when that happens. That your first prayer can now be an incense of worship. Please I want you to be very sensitive. You see, the ministry of the Spirit, please listen, the ministry of the Spirit is such that you not only hear and learn, you become. And there is an agency, there is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that helps men become. As many as received Him, He gave them power to become. There is an ability. He says, now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then He says, we all with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are what? changed changed into the image that we are seeing I shared with you one key death the second key hmm.
before I share this, I pray for you that you will never forget what I'm sharing now. The second key that a man must have to be mightily used by God is you must have an encounter with the body of Christ. Write it down. An encounter not just with the Holy Spirit. An encounter not just with the word of God. An encounter with the body of Christ. Very few believers understand this mystery that the body of Christ is a mystery. We understand an encounter. See, there are four levels of encounters that are revealed to us from scripture. I've done teachings on this. Number one, the nature of that is, look at me. Let me have your attention. Do you know that the way God works is that because he is great and we cannot see all of him, he fragments himself to dimensions and allocates them on earth so that men can be recipients of his benevolence. Are we together? That means that every dimension of God that seeks to find expression in the earth, this is how it reaches the earth. Number one, God will find a man. Everybody say a man. God will enter a covenant with that man that becomes the platform for allowing that dimension of him to be hosted in the earth. Are we together now? And all through the lifetime of that man, he becomes God's official vehicle for partaking of that dimension of him. You will never partake of that dimension of God ignoring that man. He has by that covenant become a system. He's no longer a human being. He's a system that allows that program of God. Please understand what I teach you. Look up. On earth today, the spiritual system that handles the ordinance and the altar of faith is Kenneth Copeland. Start from any man of God that operates in faith. Eventually, you will arrive at that spiritual system. If Kenneth Copeland dies, I hope you know before it was in Hagen. Are we together now? When Hagen died, then it switched. If Kenneth Copeland goes to be with the Lord, because the program must be preserved by priesthood. And there must be a system that maintains it. Now watch this. You may listen to Kenneth Copeland and see him just teach generally, but ignore him and the system he represents. You will be surprised that the heavens, as far as faith is concerned, will be closed over you. In his lifetime, Billy Graham, watch this, carried that grace. Billy Graham was one of the few men that saw the man to leave him and he was still alive to watch it. That man too left and it was on Reinhard Bonke. Are we together now? Reinhard Bonke was not just an evangelist. Reinhard Bonke was the spiritual system that was responsible for drawing souls. That's why Reinhard Bonke can preach somewhere and someone who didn't attend the crusade will burn his chance. Is that evangelism? Watch this. The Bible says the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the times so they knew what to do. We must master the art of reading the writings on the wall. Otherwise our ignorance will make us victims. I'm teaching on the encounter with the body of Christ. But he today is God's spiritual system for the release of God's anointing to heal. The healing ministry came right from Catherine Kuhlman to Ora Roberts to heal. Ben Heal, the living entity today that represents our spiritual system. You dishonor him in secret and in the open, you will never carry the healing anointing. It is not only God you honor, you must honor the spiritual system. This is where the arrogance of believers come in. It is not human worship. Is honor to the protocol. Remember, I started teaching by saying the glory of God comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept. So when God wants to bless you, he will not only visit you in the secret place, he will create an opportunity for an encounter with that living system. Now watch this. Now you will understand what I'm teaching. Jesus cannot start his program 
although he's the son of God. Then he hears that there is one wild man baptizing people in Jordan. Are we still together? I hope you know that man was his cousin. And he didn't say, oh, my cousin, we spoke when we were in the womb. No. He discerned that it was a young body carrying Elijah. Remember what I told you. Now watch this. The spirit of the Antichrist that was walking in the scribes and the Pharisees came and started asking Elijah because you know the battle was to search for the seed of the woman. And so the spirit of the Antichrist functioning through the scribes, they said, are you the one to come? Are you? And he said, I am the voice of one crying. What sort of confusion is this? Watch this. John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. But baptism was a strategy to help him identify the Christ. So every time John, watch this. Every time John pours water, he will look up. Nothing happens. He will say, go. So watch this. Please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Now, the Bible says, suddenly, they see this young, handsome, 30-year-old man who for 18 years, we don't know where he went to. The last time we heard of him, he was age 12. And for 18 years, where Jesus went to, we don't know. Herein is the mystery of saying people came out of nowhere. There is nobody who comes out of nowhere. When men are in their period of training, they are hidden. 18 years, we don't hear about Jesus again. The next time, is a 30 year old Jewish boy. Watch this. The moment John sees him, John was given a code in the wilderness that on whoever the Holy Spirit descends, that is the Christ of God. Are we together? Now, the point is that Jesus could not open his own heavens, even though he was the word. He needed to submit to the system that was at work. If Jesus ignored John, he would have been surprised. Let's pray in the spirit for even if it's two minutes before we continue. Shalipa rusa bakata shala grade bakatoch. Manta skabara shabaru sete shele bakomtia. Brato shali brakato seleketa. Quicken my understanding, O God. Shilam braskata parato shelekete palatos. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Please sit down. Remember, this is a retreat. Don't forget why we're here. Are we together now? So Jesus comes and John, the spirit of Elijah, looks through the eyes of a body you call John and sees through the body of the one you call Jesus and sees the logos of God and says, Behold the Lamb. Look at the kind of speakings. Behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus comes to be baptized. And John looks at him and says, I have seen who and what you are. I am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. And Jesus makes a statement that is instructive. So far, permit it to be so. I cannot break the protocol, although I am the word. So far it to be so that all scripture, all scripture, all scripture and he submitted to the ministry and the grace of that spiritual system are we together i hope you know malachi chapter 4 tells us before the great and terrible day of the lord elijah will come now the lord is coming but elijah must precede him and he must acknowledge elijah and then he comes out of the waters and the Bible makes a fearful statement. And the heavens open over Jesus. Over Jesus. Remember he prayed and fasted for 40 days. The heavens did not open. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. The heavens did not open. Let me show you spiritual mysteries. But he submitted to the body of Christ. And his heavens opened. And the Spirit of God descended upon him in the similitude of a dove. And the Father spoke, saying, This is now my beloved Son. What was he before? 
my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and he prophesied to creation hear ye him when he went to the desert a crowd came when he went up the mountain a crowd came because a verdict under open heaven said hear ye him you cannot tell the world to hear you it will take another voice to say hear ye him Please, can you play strings for me? You guys really need to be sensitive now. Mighty God of Israel. The moment Elijah, through John, meets Jesus, baptism stopped. There was no record of baptizing again. Are we together now? And then Elijah is caught by Jezebel. Remember, their fights did not finish. Jezebel vowed to take his head. Two of them died. Now Jezebel comes into Herodias, the little daughter. And Elijah is in John. And the battle is continuing. They catch Elijah in John. And she dances before the king. And they say, what do you want? And he said, like I promised, the head, what was it about the head? It was not just the head of a man. Listen. Before Elijah will be beheaded, he had finished his assignment on Jesus. That was why Elijah got it well. I don't know what changed his mind later on. He said, I must decrease so that he will increase. If Elijah was beheaded before he met Jesus, salvation would not be possible because the heavens would remain closed. Although it was the plan of God. Now watch this. A young boy called Samuel is lying down by the ark. Are we together? And he was being mentored by a priest called Eli. And then the Bible says one time he would hear the voice of God calling him. Samuel, I hope you know at that point Eli was in his backsliding state. The Bible says his eye had become dim. His children had gotten into all kinds of atrocities. And yet in that dim state, God would not bypass Eli. When he called Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli. And said, he said, the next time he calls, say, speak Lord for thy servant here. And Samuel would later become a mighty prophet of God. Now watch this. Saul, the son of Kish, lost the father's donkey. And they wanted to look for that donkey. Are we together? And for three days, they were around. If Saul did not get that donkey, he would have written a book that restoration is not possible. But he told him, he said, no. All things are possible, but we need to meet a man. There is a holy man of God. He didn't say we need to meet God, oh. We need to meet a man, a sister. As soon as they saw Samuel, ah, do you know, challenges are relative to the grace that confronts them. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, there is a grace that can trivialize it completely. As soon as they meet Samuel, you can imagine, you think Samuel say, my God, your donkey is missing. said, leave the issue of donkey. Go up and let me tell you what is in your heart. As soon as Samuel met with Saul, the donkey started going back home. No prayer. An encounter with a human and restoration just happened. The donkey started going back home on its own. And Samuel said, is it not because God has anointed it to be king over Israel? Took the oil, poured it on his head. Watch this. And he told him, he said, number one, when you are going, your donkey is restored. Two, you will meet three people holding two loaves of bread each. They will salute you and give you two as if they don't know what to do with it. Because you met a man. Three, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines. And the spirit of God will come upon you, etc, etc. And he began to speak to him. Do you know the error of Samuel that made him lose his throne? It was not sin against God. It was sin against a man. They pressured him to offer sacrifices. And would not wait for Samuel to come. And the people, he felt what is there. You are a priest and a king. Let me do it. As soon as he offered the sacrifice... Samuel came and said, no, you have done foolishly. 
the throne is taken from you. Blind Bartimaeus would have said, Thou son of Saul, have mercy on me. A man lost his position because he could not discern the body. Watch this. There was another spiritual system called Moses. Moses was lifting up a rod with his hand and controlling the victory of the people as if they were robots. The Bible said if his hand went down, the people lost, regardless of their prowess in learning how to fight. And when Moses was tired, I thought it was wise for Aaron to carry the rod. But they said, no, it's not about holding it. We will hold your hand, not the rod. Gehazi carried the rod of Elisha and placed it on the dead body and nothing happened. Listen, this is not human worship. I know that there's a lot of nonsense going on and please don't, don't misunderstand what I'm teaching you. But when God wants to help you, it is not only God that visits you. He will send men to visit you. So the psalmist says it this way. What is man that thou, can't you replace him? What did you hide in man that men are not seeing? What did you put in man? When Jesus was about to come to the earth, heaven was stranded until they found a woman who made her womb available. Zechariah asked for explanation, he became dumb. Mary asked for explanation, the angel politely explained. You would think it's unfair. Watch this. So the church is called the body of Christ. Do you know what that means? That means the material dimension of the possibilities in God has been vested in his body. Now, please come, gentlemen. Can I have two more? All of you, please watch. May you learn this mystery and never forget for the rest of your life. Come, my friend. Look at this. God distributes his possibilities across the body like mineral resources. Are we together? When you are dealing with oil largely, you deal with the south-south part of this nation. Is that true? The Igbo people are there gifted and graced for business and so on and so forth. The West with the intellectual prowess and all of that and so on and so forth and, and it continues like that. This is how it is spiritually. Watch this. This man can have the grace for favor. This man can have the grace for speed. Watch this. This man can have the grace for healing and the supernatural. This dimension can have a grace for leadership and governance. Are we together now? This is you praying, oh God, I want to rise to become a governor. You showed me that I will be a governor and God tells you I have given you all things. And you say, but why is it not working in my life? And what he's saying is distributed in my body is an allocation for the grace that can make that dream come to pass. Your assignment is to sustain the flexibility and the discernment to find which spiritual system scattered in the body has become the host of the grace that you need. Now watch this. There is a side effect to this distribution because the way God builds these men and these institutions to carry his grace is such that there must be a spiritual bias. Now. Let's assume you are the one carrying the healing grace. If God is raising this man to be the next Belihim, the way God will deal with him, God will not teach him things about administration. God will not teach him things about prosperity and church growth. In his dealings with God, he will just be having encounters, prayer, fasting. This will be the scope of his experience. It is dangerous for him to build a ministry around this limitation as though any dimension of God that is out of the scope of his experience is wrong. Are you seeing now? Now this man, I'm speaking respectfully, I'm speaking to the body. This man can have a flourishing church, but the scope of his theology and his mentorship will be to them that if you see any administrator trivialize him, just focus on the healing ministry. 
he is responding to the bias of his dealing, not knowing that at best he is only an effective member of the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, the danger, that's right, please play the strings for me. The danger here is that you will begin to see the limitation and the imbalance as this man grows. Because you will find out that the people under his mentorship will not pay attention to other dimensions of possibilities vested within the body. And a time will come, it will become a corporate error. Now, it doesn't mean the person is bad. That limitation was intentional to make him depend on the other supplies in the body. This guy may love God, you will be healed in his church, but people can steal money anywhere because there's no administrative intelligence and because there is no grace and the humility to outsource that possibility, he may remain limited. If this guy is your only model of a Christian, all you will say is that God heals and that's all. But there is more. Are you seeing that now? Watch this. If this guy, in addition to what he has, now receives the grace for administration, added to that grace for healing, you will see the difference. The possibilities of the body of Christ. Now he's receiving it. Watch this. Let me tell you this. Believe me when I tell you, when God says all things are possible, this is why. So when you go to God to pray, he will tell you, I have answered you. You can be in a meeting, shouting, rolling, jumping, and the only person that will be healed is somebody's right ear that is not even sure whether he's perfectly healed or not. Benny Hill can be teaching on relationship and marriage. Relationship and marriage. And yet somebody is healed somewhere. That means, watch this. That means the problem was not God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The problem was not even God's desire. The problem is being exposed to the atmosphere that carries the possibility that you desire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There are men on earth today who have what we call the kingmaker anointing. They never become kings themselves, but there is a grace that makes kings. Kingmakers never become kings, but they anoint kings. You will see an old man who has a church of not more than 30 people, but he can anoint you with a grace that is global. It's a grace God gave them. If you sustain the discernment. Now let me tell you this, look up. There is also a side effect to this body and this is why many of us don't receive it. Because the vessels that represent this system are earthen and the vessels carry a lot of flaws. The vessels carry a lot of troubles. Are we together? Elijah was a temperous man. Moses was an angry man. Abraham kept looking at Hagar. Because when his wife suggested he would have refused, that means it has been there. Remember the system of temptation. It must be planted in your heart for a long time. Are we together? Look at the kind of vessels. Jesus fasts and has a night with you. And look at the kind of 12 people he chooses. You fast and choose Judas, Thomas, how about Jesus, the fountain of wisdom. But it is God's system that his treasure is stored in earthen vessels. Now look up please. Let me teach you something as we pray. The mystery behind receiving from the body is hidden in the riddle of Samson. The Bible tells us in the book of Judges that there was this man, very handsome man whose strength was mysterious. When Samson is about to be born, an angel comes and meets Manoah and they ask the angel about the destiny of that child. 
and he says that his hair would be preserved because he would be a Nazarene unto God. Are we together? Samson grows to know this secret. He becomes a great man. He obviously was not a macho man. Otherwise, they would not ask him the source of his strength. He was a man who was mysteriously strong. With the jawbone of an ass, he would kill 3,000 Philistines. Strong man. One time, Samson was on his way to go and meet a lady. A lady again. Are we together now? And he's on his way going. And a lion just comes out. Are we together now? And Samson tears that lion with his bare hands and leaves it there. And then the Bible says that he returns a week later. Are we still together? And he sees a mystery that the bees went to the carcass of that lion and deposited honey. Now, why will the bees leave a tree that is green and flourishing and go inside a carcass and put honey? And Samson noted this strange occurrence. And when he was speaking to the Philistines, he said, I have a riddle. Out of something strong has come something sweet. Sila. The mystery of partaking from the body is hidden in the riddle of Samson. If you can endure the smell of the carcass, you will still find honey there. The bees would have planted in a nice tree. I know the man of God has anger problem, but he's still a prophet. If you can endure the anger, one day he will speak over your life and turn your life around. Now, please, I'm not justifying lasciviousness. I hope you get what I'm saying. Please. But let me tell you sincerely, the best of us is still a man. And you must master the art of receiving spiritual things. Elijah was a prophet, an angry one, for disrupting his worship fire bombs you. Look at that kind of prophet. I mean, there's no sorry in the economy of Elijah. You come to disrupt him on the mountain. Fire comes on you straight up. Do you know what Elisha would have endured to carry that anointing? The sons of the prophet were there. I'm sure they were already bitter and angry. Stupid man. Is it just because God anointed you? And you would think God will be angry and take the grace away. It's amazing. Look at them laughing at Moses. And St. Moses married an Ethiopian woman. And while they were talking, the glory of God came and lifted. And because Aaron was operating in priesthood, he was immune. But his, his, his um, what's her name? Miriam became white as leprous. Just because they were discussing about a man and God had them. It is these kinds of men that he suffered no man to do them wrong. He even reproved kings for their sake, saying... He didn't say, touch not my man, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. There is a backing from heaven that immunes them. Their limitation is God's business to deal with. But as far as the advancement of the kingdom is concerned, he has chosen to work with them. He will be angry for nothing, he will not change it. It's his program. Can I tell you this? Please understand what I teach you. John the beloved was in the Isle of Patmos for the testimony of Jesus. The Bible says that, Revelation chapter 1, that I, John, was in the Isle called Patmos. Are we together? For the testimony of Christ. And then he heard a voice from behind him. And then he was in the spirit. And John is first taken to the throne room. Amazing. The first place John meets is the throne room there. And or not, not just the throne room. He, watch this. John hears a voice calling him. And John turned to hear that voice or to see that voice. And John did not see a man. He saw seven lampstands. Everybody says seven lampstands. The lampstand there is not just the spirit of God. The seven lampstands there represent the Catholic church, the universal body. In the midst of the lampstand, that's where he saw Christ. So where is Christ found? In the midst of the lampstand, in spite of the imperfection of the man of God, in spite of the limitation of the church, if you look well, you will still see Christ in the midst of the lampstand. 
I know there's tribalism there. But if you can take away your eyes from the carcass and look, you will still see Christ in the midst of the lampstand. He will not leave himself without a witness. Let me tell you this. Go and study Bible history. Some of those who carried the greatest anointings were some of the most controversial and terrible and unwanted people. We love them because they are dead now. But those who were alive with them had a real problem. Yet you would think God would give him. We love Jesus because he's gone to heaven. If Jesus were on earth, many of us would hate him. Go and find out what he did. Jesus leaves a crusade and he's controversially sitting with a woman confirmed to be a prostitute with six husbands. Jesus. The other day, the other day, a woman came with an alabaster box. Talk to me, man. Broke it in, a, in front of his, his feet and used her hair. And Jesus was enjoined and when, listen, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not a heretic. Jesus was hungry. Imagine if it was your business. He went to a fig tree and just because he could not get food, he couldn't be patient. His patience is not the fruit of the spirit. He cursed the tree. Imagine if it were your, your tree or your shop. You would love Jesus. Don't blame the apostles for being angry walking with him. One day he would leave the apostles and be alone. And the apostles say, we suspect you are going to run away. You have made us leave fishing. You have made us leave our wives. We are following you because there is a proposition that you will conquer Caesar and Herod. Don't play games with us. Why are you alone talking with the father? Why are you moody these days? And he said, I have many things to tell you. But he cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, he said, look, forget that thing. Peter said, no way, we are going with you. You will leave us now to Herod. So we will say, well, what will we tell him? You cause trouble and leave us, no way. That's why they were angry. They were not missing Jesus. They were in trouble already. How will you go in the midst of this trouble and now leave us? One day, watch this. Listen, one day they got angry and the debate reached Jesus. We have left all to follow you. We will not hide this thing again. Just tell us straight to the point. What is our court in this? And Jesus said, ah, finally. Finally. When Judas kissed Jesus and they caught Jesus and it was clear that he would not defend himself. Did you see what they did? They ran away and it was not their fault. They finally confirmed their fears. And when Jesus is in the grave, Peter looks at them, John 21, I go a fishing, and they say, we go with you. Let's return back to our fishing. Jesus is alive now, and he goes by the shore and says, little children, have you any catch? Who is that? That voice sounds familiar. Peter now. And he says, cast your net to the right side. As soon as Peter caught fish, this is Jesus. He comes to Jesus. And Jesus looks at him and in verse 15 of John 21, when they sat at table to eat, he said, Simon Bajuna, lovest thou me more than this? You walked with me for three and a half years and in 72 hours you denied me three times. Do you love me more than this? And from that time there would be the apostles of the Lamb that would love him even unto death. I said all that to tell you when the Bible says vessels are earthen, take it seriously. It is not something bad. It is something true. Vessels are earthen. Just because the woman may not be able to have a child does not mean she's not a mighty prophet of God. You may look at her childlessness to say if she's a woman of God, why don't she have a child? And miss an anointing that can change your life. Listen, the body of Christ 
is a mysterious entity for not discerning it the bible says some are weak some are sick and some do sleep two testimonies and we pray i started searching for those who carried the anointings on the generals because every time I read history something within me just told me that there is a button of this for you for a generation and it was not just zeal to love God it was more than that I started searching Robert Lairdon the people who were alive Benny Hill then all T.L. Osborne, all these great men. I found a few people that I made up my mind that I will have to encounter them to take these graces because I knew that even my own life, it was not just Jesus alone that I needed to encounter. I needed the encounter with the body of Christ. I had the privilege of meeting some of these people. Some have gone to be with the Lord and I honor God for the privilege. I remember one time, you've heard me say it in my teachings. I was going to travel to the US to go and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter for two weeks. I was not going as a man of God. I wanted to go and serve that grace. They carried levels of graces. I remember having to receive an impartation from a man of God who had the privilege to be connected with the graces that came from Smith Wigglesworth. And I said, please tell me, what did Smith Wigglesworth say? And he said, he told Lester Sumro, he said, when you get old, do not die with this grace find young men who carry these graces and he said make sure you transfer this anointing before you go to be with them though we are few we are surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song We'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. One more time. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. When I received that impartation, my life changed. In 2004, I was in Joss pursuing Red Hat Bonke desperately. I saw a grace upon his life that I knew was part of the equippings for the apostolic ministry. I would never forget it was a crowd of people in Joss. I stood for six hours. The first day the meeting was over and by the second day I said no, I can't go as a man of God. I was looking for something to do because I know you have to serve your way as a sign of honor into real anointings. But this nonsense that people do around, that's why we don't receive anything. I stood there for six hours. My hunger had reached the heaven. Now, remember, I've, I've seen Jesus. I would have said, I've seen Jesus. What is there? Hmm. Renard Bonke was done preaching. And as soon as he finished, he was going to take water. And suddenly my eyes opened I saw the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit like a bird that was bigger than this building 
and I mean no exaggeration, hovered round the crusade ground. White. I thought everybody was watching this. And the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. I caught an anointing that day. I caught a grace. I aligned to a system. In one of the encounters I had, this man walks up to me. Now these encounters by no means negate the authority of scripture. Scripture is the highest dimension of prophecy. Are we together now? Yes. And he begins to talk with me and we're interacting. And it's amazing. I couldn't even get what he was saying. And at the end of it, he turned and was on his way going. And I wanted to tell him thank you. I said, sir, please what is your name? And he kept walking. And then later he turned to me and smiled and said, Paul. And he turned and continued going. I'm a product of many anointings. I'm a product of many graces. I stand before you as one privileged by God to know and understand these things. Here's how God blesses people. And God is able to make all grace. Are we, are we Bible students? God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That is the secret of sufficiency. All grace, not some. You can have some grace. You will encounter the grace that makes for prosperity. Add it to the grace that makes for hunger and encounter. Add it to the grace that makes for speed. Add it to the grace that makes for influence and government. And then you stand as a species of man that is strange to describe. You are a product of possibilities that are not affordable in the economy of men. This is why we honor men. We do not honor men just because they are bodies. We honor men because they are trays carrying something ancient. The bodies may be weak. The bodies may be young. The bodies may be frail. The bodies may not have a countenance that is comely. But behind those bodies are mysterious systems. And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, the Lord preserved them. It starts from verse 10. Go to the same 10. Hosea chapter 12, I think. I have also spoken by the prophets. How did I speak? By the prophets. I have multiplied visions. I have used similitudes. All by the ministry of the prophets. Listen. One encounter, it is true, can change a man's life. Years ago, I paid for, was it sugarcane or something, for two women, two frail women. Mothers, old mothers. And I just said, please let me honor them. And they looked at me. Nice Christian, obviously uneducated mothers. And they began to bless me. I don't know why I did not pay attention to what they said. And one of the frail women who was trying to lose her, this thing, the time money, so that she would do. I said, no, no, no. It was not more than 100 naira. And she looked at me and said, my son forever walk upon gold. Not all men are men. There are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial. Please listen to me very carefully. When Pastor Elijah called our mother, Pastor Sarah, to come here and make the cruise, I know many of us, especially if you are a member of our church, just casually receive. Let me tell you the truth. If you believe in this that I've taught you, you will change your life sometimes overnight. There was a time around the world plane crashes were so much. People were dying anyhow. And I know I travel a lot. 
So it's not, it's not enough to just sit down and say, I shall not die and stupidly start in one day. I, I, I just kill myself for nothing. And I found, I was traveling for a meeting in Ekiti. And as we we're passing a little village, I was seeing the obituaries of people. Very old people, not in the state, I don't know, a small village. Please listen. And then I saw one, 132. He just died. I said, in Nigeria, whenever you see prevalent patterns of possibilities, it means there is a grace within that territory. When we were done ministering, I was on my way returning back and we told the driver, stop. And we came out. It was a pure Yoruba speaking place. There was nobody we could identify who spoke English there. I said, no way, the devil is a liar. We must find someone. Eventually, we found someone who could speak English in a limited way. And I said, I'm a man of God. We are men of God. And we have discerned the grace for a long life. I saw 145 years obituary when we returned. You call 145 a mistake? You are joking. This life is too wicked to survive 145 years by luck. There must be a grace sponsoring that possibility. And then we said, where is the oldest man in this place? Just want to honor him and bless him. It was clearly a Christian, a Christian area. And then they took us to an old man. Very, he didn't look so old. I'm sure he would be 128 something too. And this man, they interpret for him and say, oh, this is a great man of God. He was passing and he wanted you to pray for him. I thought the man would say, oh, Break down. You see, those who carry these things know they have it. Though we are few, understand my song now. We are surrounded by men who have crossed that river before. And then the man began to pray in Yoruba, releasing the grace for long life from the depth of his heart. Honestly, I didn't hear what he was saying, and I didn't care what he was saying. That was being put on my head. When he was done, sowed the seed into his life, honored him, and I got up. I was on my way. I wanted to greet the women I had met. And then the man tapped me and said, That one 32 year old man, this is his wife standing. I said, Let's go back. I tapped, I said, Madam, the Bible says two of them have become one. So if, if your husband is dead, like Abel is alive in you. The woman was about 120 something years. And she was standing as if a woman of 60 something. No stick, no nothing. I tapped her, I said, Madam, please pray for me. And she smiled, she said I should come. I entered a small room and I saw photos. She was the wife of his youth. They married very young from when they could not even snap well to when they did those pictures that you did in a dark room until the image comes. To the last few weeks, she was the only husband of his youth. I said, ma, I don't know whether to call you my grandmother or ancestor, whatever it is. Please, they've prayed for us, but the grace that kept this man, please, I discern that that grace is there. The woman said, kneel down, she removed her shoes and placed two of her legs on the ground and this woman was praying for over 15 minutes today whether the plane turns like this i sleep because the glory of god comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept having the readiness to judge all disobedience only when your obedience is complete listen now some of you here listen to me your very parents are not just male and female. They are systems. They never went to school, but they use Akara to build a bungalow. That's not business. That is a grace. The mama never became a billionaire, but she never begged. You never saw her beg. One day, if you are wise, you can package a seed and say, Mama, this ministry doors are not opening. The highest partner I've met gave me 10,000. This is not a blessing. My destiny will not move with that kind of seed. 
Mama can sit down and say, my son, let me bless you. You saw me for 45 years as my son. I never beg. Don't beg. And that's it. The heavens opens over the dimension you honor. Please hear what I'm telling you. In this kingdom, you don't receive from a colleague. No. It's not human worship. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, the light that came from him to me, he gave me an instruction in the latter years. And he said, everywhere you go to to minister, there must be someone in that meeting that the light that came from me to you must come upon them. I have not failed in that assignment once. Please hear me, Abuja. This is not a Pastor Elijah meeting. This is a platform for the body of Christ to have an encounter. You are here tonight in the midst of several graces, many ancient. If you have the eyes to see, your ministry can step into a dimension. You can choose to assume and remain there. We rise in this kingdom systemically. The Lord gave me an instruction that one day he would send me to God's servant, Bishop David Oyele. And that morning the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, this is the day. Carry the seed straight to Canaan land. I took the seed, boarded, available flight. I was on my way to Lagos and to water. Sacrifice. But I discerned that he was not just a man of God. It was a spiritual system that represented possibilities. I went there with my heart open. And when I went there, I saw the sea, did everything, long story short. I came out, I was going to enter the car. And the Holy Spirit told me, come out, right there at Canaan land. He said, kneel down and place your hand on that ground. I placed my hand, he said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. Not every man of God will share with you their testimonies like this. Please treasure what you hear. Years ago, I had a vision. In that vision, it was a gathering of pastors like this. And our father in the Lord, Papa Ia Debo, was on stage. And he was eating. And from the crowd, he called me. He said, come. And people were angry and saying, where is this young man going to? And he came and he said, sit down, let's eat. I said, no, I was well trained. I will never do that. And he said, I'm, I told you, eat. And I began to eat with him. I got up and that vision disturbed me. And I wrote it for many years. Last year, I had the privilege of being alone in his prayer room. I said, Lord, the covenant, the dream and the vision that I had, it is time for that grace, whatever mantle. See, my brothers and my sisters, please do not ignore me. I know people have abused this thing. I know people have made merchandise of others. I know people have manipulated others. But can I tell you the truth? It is true that God uses men to bless men. It is true that God uses men to lift men. No man takes this on of himself. If your heart can be open this evening, it will be a worthy way to have started your year. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. And we will pray. But before I leave this place, I'm praying that something from heaven, true man, that can change and turn a man's life.
you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching